Hello and welcome to Records and Information Governance in Microsoft Teams Enterprise. Learning Outcomes. In this lesson you will 1. Discuss the storage locations of Microsoft Teams Enterprise content. 2. Research and design retention and disposition policies from Microsoft Teams Enterprise sites, chats and channel messages. 3. Integrate the Microsoft Teams Enterprise policies into your Microsoft 365 governance plan. Collaboration, flexibility and extensibility are the core design principles of Microsoft Teams. Microsoft originally created Teams for internal teamwork, which was especially useful at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. But as the lockdown continued, Microsoft fast-tracked significant changes and user education campaigns to support Teams adoption. This approach worked. Microsoft Teams is now used by several hundred million users. Teams' adoption drove Records and Information Management, or RIM, professionals to re-examine the question, what is a corporate record, in yet another repository? Although retention policies were available in Teams in March 2018, many RIM teams declared content from Microsoft Teams as non-records. However, as more users joined and stored information there, RIM teams reassessed. They discovered that, within reason, the answer could be as simple or complex as their employer chose. Cue the need for Teams governance plans. Today, the term information sprawl doesn't really do Microsoft Teams justice. It is considered to be a suite of applications with a specific graphical user interface, or GUI, that stores content in a dizzying number of locations. The challenge is that Teams governance is still in its early stages compared to its architectural sprawl. After all, at the time of this writing, a records governance expert can assign retention to Teams chats and messages only through the Microsoft Purview Compliance Center, or PCC. In truth, Microsoft Teams has more disposition jobs available than that, which we'll share in this lesson. As Teams architecture matures, an organization's governance plan should apply retention and disposition policies in a number of locations to reduce information sprawl. Currently, Microsoft Teams has many features to help you collaborate both internally and with these external parties. These features include an activity feed, conversations with individuals, small groups and defined teams, Teams calendars, which include access to Microsoft Exchange online calendars, instant messaging or chats, video and audio meetings or calls with integrated meeting notes and whiteboarding, file sharing through Microsoft SharePoint and OneDrive for Business, and extensibility through Microsoft Apps and Tabs such as Tasks, Yammer, Insights, Microsoft Stream, Forms, Microsoft Lists, Approvals, OneNote, Shifts, Wiki. You can also integrate applications that enhance collaboration like Smartsheet and Microsoft Power BI. We recommend you check out available applications through the Teams App Store. End users of Microsoft Teams depend on guidance published by their RIM team, so it knows what to store and where. A Teams site is an excellent storage solution for records and information produced by a small team of employees and guests who are devoted to solving a specific problem or implementing a project within a finite amount of time. In fact, if you're going to outline the scope of what content should be stored in Microsoft Teams as opposed to SharePoint or OneDrive, here are our recommendations for your organization. If your company doesn't have a third-party document management solution, but does have 365, SharePoint offers you some functionality. SharePoint is ideal for document storage of large teams that have many deliverables and longer project schedules. Teams is a subset of SharePoint and is more targeted for short bursts of project activity. Smaller teams, a few deliverables and brief project schedules. OneDrive is also a subset of SharePoint and is ideal for drafts and files of temporary value. You can invite users into your OneDrive to edit and comment, but finished versions should be uploaded to Teams, SharePoint or another repository, depending upon the initiative. Once RIM publishes this broad vision, it should follow up with specific guidance on how to structure records within each application. 
We'll address the way records should be structured in Microsoft Teams shortly. But first, let's review the policies and settings you'll find in Teams. Regardless of whether you're an administrator or a member of RIM writing the governance plan, you'll want to be familiar with them. Whitlock Financial Services is a large, publicly traded company. Perched on a hill in the outskirts of the Central Business District, the company's towering headquarters commands a breathtaking view, especially from the 20th floor. The building is filled with the offices of many finance-savvy people, and plenty of admin personnel too. The company generates a staggering amount of data and email every day, and along with this comes the inevitable records and information management issues. Felicity Watson, the CIO of the company, has put a Microsoft 365 migration in motion, and many cups of coffee later, she has successfully implemented governance in Exchange Online. Now, Felicity is turning her attention to retention and disposition policies in Microsoft Teams. Whitlock is no different than any other Microsoft customer. It rolled out Teams more quickly than anticipated due to the company's pandemic-associated remote work policy. At the time, the company focused on capacity and robustness, not governance. But as the use of Teams has continued, Felicity realizes that there's an opportunity to simplify her portfolio of software applications. She's decommissioned several conferencing and instant messaging platforms, but now recent storage audits confirm the number of Teams sites and content is growing rapidly. Felicity knows this must be addressed before the problem gets worse. Mm -hmm. 